Hey everybody, Willie at Venom Central here. <clears throat> I'm going to feed a couple of my crotalids for you today. A couple of my favorite rattlesnakes. I have a large group of these. The Mexican West Coast rattlesnake, the Crotalus basiliscus. Now I've raised this group from babies and they're about five years old. And this will be their first year producing. I'm going to show you what a strong feeding response these guys have. Good boy. And then you can notice the, the yellow. That's the venom on that rat. Now normally these guys are hit and hang on. Sometimes they'll hit it and release it. But 90% of the time they'll hit and hang on like a pit bull. Now here's one of my gravid females. And she's a big snake. She's about five and a half foot and probably weighs 12, 15 pounds. And that's the male up there. One of my males, anyways. And he's a big boy. He's a six footer. He's probably closer to 18 pounds or so. Little girl. Now these rats are heated up. And a girl. So they can pick up on that heat signature. You know, all your crowlids are pit vipers. Now you'll notice when I'm feeding things, I'll I'll kind of shake them around like this. There's a reason for that. I want that snake to envenomate that rat. Give him a nice big dose of venom. That venom's already starting to digest that rodent. Especially with captive snakes, they don't get the exercise that they normally do. A lot of people keep snakes in too small of an enclosure. You notice I keep my snakes in big enclosures. But I want her to think that that rat's alive. And give it a nice dose of venom. Help with the digestion process. I'm actually amazed that she's still feeding this close to dropping babies. But I'm about to give her small rodents right now. She's eating small rats. I don't want to give her nothing too big. And over here we have another female. That she's a little bit smaller. And I'll split her up from the other ones. Ain't a good idea to feed these guys together. They're pretty aggressive and they'll nail each other. Now, the Crotalus basiliscus, a lot of people don't realize that this is a big rattlesnake. I mean, this one's only three years old, and she's already four foot and probably ten pounds. And they get large. A lot of your crotalids, you know, they don't reach maturity until they're six, seven years old. But these guys grow rapidly, and they get big. I mean, heavy-bodied, big. You know, everybody thinks the Eastern Diamondback's the biggest rattlesnake. I beg to differ. You see a big monster basiliscus, you might just change your mind. I bred this species once before, many years ago. And I ended up losing my female. She gave birth to a nice big clutch of babies. And she was so depleted, she ended up dying. She was old. She was probably 
20 years old. So I was stuck with a male, and he is an absolute monster. So I ended up selling that male, Basiliscus, to Tommy. And in return, he sold it to Dean Repa over at the Cape Fear Serpentarium. If you ever want to see a truly big Basiliscus, go check out the Cape Fear Serpentarium. That's actually my male that is on display there. Well, he was my male. He's Dean's now. But uh, six and a half foot, probably 25 pounds. Snake is an absolute monster. Just give you an idea of just how big Basiliscus get. And I raised that snake from a baby, and he's, well, he's probably 30 years old, and he's still thriving. So these snakes can have a nice long life if they're taken care of properly. I keep my basiliscus at about 82 degrees ambient air temperature. They come from a nice hot arid area. <clears throat> but they all get a nice heat spot. Everybody's got a little heat lamp in there. If they prefer to bath, they can. If you notice, I keep hides on each end of the cage. One on a warm end, one on a cool end. Let them choose where they want to be. And our big boy here, he's starting to take him down. Another big male that's down here, uh, and we fed him before we turned the camera on. A lot of these Mexican rattlesnakes. They feed different than our native stuff, I think. They just, they have a feeding response that is just insane. They grab and hang on, kind of like a Bushmaster does. A lot of your lachesis feed like that. You know, working off a heat signature and find their target, explode like a missile and grab a hold of a prey item and hang on to it. And the basiliscus kind of do the same thing. Most of your rattlesnakes will hit a prey item, release it, follow the pheromonic trail, and then consume the animal after it's perished. These guys don't care. They grab a hold of their prey items and hang on. That's a really cool rattlesnake. It's got a really heavily kilted scales, kind of beaded. They are, uh, they're not in your Dorisus family. I mean, you're, you know, your, your Crowless Dorisus. I mean, there's so many different subspecies, you know, the Dorisus cuminensis, Dorisus culminatus, Dorisus terrificus, uh, Dorisus simus, and then there's a Crowless basiliscus. And it looks like he'd be in the Dorisus family, but he's not. Even though he is very similar. And their scales are really beaded up. Which is really cool. Gives him a real rough looking appearance. I 
all that body with a little bitty head. They don't have that big monster large head like an Eastern Diamondback would have. Kind of got a small head for a rattlesnake, but a big set of fangs. A bite from one of these big guys would most likely be fatal, especially one of this size. I've been working with venomous reptiles for over 30 years now, and I've never suffered a bite. And there's a reason for that. I've got a protocol and things that I stick to. I mean, my three main factors that I adhere by is I never enter my room if I'm not feeling good, if I'm tired, even if I'm in a bad mood. I do not come in here and clean or feed or work with venomous snakes. If I feel a little bit off, they can wait a day. Second is, I never, ever underestimate an animal. Never get too comfortable with an animal. As soon as you get lax is when you get tagged. And the third is, Always follow your protocols in your handling procedures. Don't never get comfortable and put your hands on an animal if you don't need to. The only time I put my hands on an animal is if I need to literally remove an eye cap, medicate, administer something to them. If it's medical attention needed. If I got to move stuff around, I'll use hooks and things like that, especially with crotalids that are fast, fast striking. You know, handling venomous snakes is, it's not something you learn, it's something that you kind of, you kind of feel. I mean, I like to have my animals feel comfortable and I truly believe this. That if my animals don't feel threatened, that I'm not a threat to them, they're not going to show me an aggressive behavior. If I have to move them, I'll hook them gently, tail them and support their body, pick them up, move them around nice, slow and gentle. Same thing with my cobras and my lapids. If you're hopping around scared and jittery, jumpy, I believe that animal feels that and he feels threatened. I don't pin animals, I don't restrain animals, unless it's absolutely necessary. They're going to fight you. If you go to neck a big rattlesnake like this, that's a death sentence. He thinks he's being eaten by something. He's going to fight you with every ounce of his body, and he's going to bite you the first chance he gets. So, I like my snakes to feel comfortable. I like my snakes to trust me. Not to see me as a threat. But then again, that comes with years of experience. Like I said, I've been doing this 30 years and I've never been bitten. And I have worked with thousands of venomous snakes. I've personally bred 13, 14 species of rattlesnake, four or five different bit of species. 10 different cobra species. <clears throat> I've worked with the biggest and the baddest. King cobras. Black-headed bushmasters. You name it, I've had my hands on it one time or another. And I'm proud of my record of not being bitten over 30 years in this field. Well, guys, just a short video today, just to kind of give you a little idea on how I feed my basiliscus. We'll do another video when that mama down there drops her babies. All right, it's Willie from Venom Central, checking out. Later.